the intention for this space is really to allow ourselves to practice showing up in truth and truth, truth is almost hard to define, but it's a felt sense where you know whether or not you are showing up with integrity and not the integrity that others tell us to be in, but the integrity with yourself, you know, that, that sense of like, yes, I did well by myself. Like I did well for myself. I stayed, I showed up in alignment with my inner knowing or my inner desire, my inner want. That's what it means by practicing showing up in our truth. It's not always the easy route. It's not always the route most celebrated or most wanted by others. But in the end, it is the path that leads to greatest change. It is the path that leads to the greatest expansion. And it is the path that leads to greater freedom. Like, I don't know if anyone here can relate, but when I'm in moments where I'm faced with a difficult decision or a challenging dynamic, when I'm able to say that hard thing or be that person that says the thing that maybe goes against the grain. But then after I do that, everyone's like, oh yeah, I was feeling that too. Or, oh yeah, I was afraid to say that. Or, oh yeah, man, I needed to hear that. That risk in being that different voice or saying something different is so worth it. Because on the other hand, I know the moments where I'm in a group dynamic and I have this like gut feeling and like, I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling good about what's happening here. Like, oh, like I don't agree. Or like, oh, this just doesn't sit well. And I sit there smiling and being like, yeah, totally. And like going along with it, I notice how horrible I feel afterwards. I feel icky. I feel like, I feel like I'm in pieces in those moments. Like, wow, like I didn't stay together. <laughs> I like left parts of myself on the edge of the road to be run over. <laughs> so anyway, that's really what I wanted to speak about when it comes to talking about truth and practicing being in truth and, and speaking forth perhaps the, the hard the hard reality or maybe speaking forth something that you believe might be unfavorable or unwanted, but committing, committing to sharing it anyway. <sighs> so I'm gonna tune in here to our, to our group and see there's anyone tuning in live because this is our practice round. This is our practice space. And whether or not anyone joins in live on these calls to connect, I'm committing to being here and to practicing being in my truth, practicing Practicing revealing 
myself authentically. So I'm curious, anyone tuning in, what's been coming up for you this week? What new themes have been coming through or experiences that you're noticing or maybe perhaps repeating themselves? Here's the time to be able to share that. So while you guys go ahead and share that in the comments, I'm gonna share what's been coming up for me this week. <sighs> so a major theme that's been coming up for me this week is this narrative of fact versus feeling, evidence versus experience, and how those themes have been coming up against one another, almost in like a war-like experience, like, like a battle. So I've been noting, noticing myself being in the middle of this battle and noticing the feeling within myself of wanting to take a side and wanting to almost armor myself against any incoming hits or perhaps in this case, what I'm talking about is the experience or the narrative around wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And I found myself being in the middle of like a crossfire of like me having experience or feeling a choice of not wanting to wear a mask and then being almost attacked with all the reasons why I should, with all of these facts as to why I should and to why it means I'm not, not thinking or not caring about the community. And what I've noticed in this experience is that when I shared my feeling, and I wanna say that feelings change, but in that moment, how I was feeling, was not to wear a mask. I found that in sharing this feeling, I was hit with evidence and reasons as to why I shouldn't be feeling what I'm feeling. And in response, at first I was thinking that I needed to fight back and to armor myself, defend myself with more facts and evidence to almost explain why my feeling was true And now I'm really seeing the bigger picture that it's not about a fact being true or a feeling being true. It's about recognizing that they're both two parts to the whole. It's about recognizing the importance of having a choice. Because if we are, if someone's having an experience and they're choosing something, and if we are going to go up against them with all of the reasons why they shouldn't be feeling what they're feeling, we're actually up against, we're actually fighting and suppressing the human experience. We're saying that you're not allowed to have an experience. We're saying that you need to be this one way or else, or else you face annihilation or else you face ostracization, you know, or else you risk not belonging. And how sad is that? Like, I feel a tingling inside of like, how sad is that? That like, by sharing what we feel, we risk losing it all. By sharing what we feel, we risk not being accepted when our natural state is to feel. So it's been really interesting because it's 
this experience is really, again, like really solidifying the importance of like, well, I'm going to create more spaces for people to feel freely because we'll never be free if we don't allow our feelings to be free. Like we just can't. If we can't feel, we'll never be free because feelings are freedom. And if we are expected to be one specific way, we are not free. <laughs> and if we are expected to do this one thing and to not have a feeling about it, we are not free. And everyone wants to be free. Everyone wants their freedom. And not everyone knows what it feels like to not be free, but when we know, when we experience having our freedom taken away, you start to realize how much it's important. And I can't say that I've personally experienced that, but I think I've seen enough doomsday TV shows to get the point. You know, they show us it everywhere, Handmaid's Tale, like, come on, every end of the world movie, they show us what it's like to not be free. And they also show us the way and the steps that are taken that like slowly take away rights and slowly take away freedoms. And then all of a sudden you open your eyes and you're like, wait, how did I end up in this world where I had no choice? And it's like, well, slowly but surely, when you didn't show up in your truth, that's when your choice was being slowly siphoned away, slowly taken away one string at a time. And you didn't notice until it was too late and you had nothing. And you had nothing. That is why it's important to practice showing up in truth, even if it's the hard, even if it's the hard route. How long can we follow along to get along, right? Like you follow along and then you're like, wait, damn, where am I? I didn't sign up for this. And it's like, yeah, your silence was you signing up, was you signing it away. So, mm, yeah, it's just, it's so clear now, like, it's so clear now that my purpose is really about reminding us all of the value of believing in our in our in ourselves and trusting our feelings, following our feelings, not getting stuck in just the facts, and also not saying facts are bad. I'm not saying facts are bad. I'm just saying facts and feelings have a place in this world. And in fact, we need them both. And in fact, we are extremely out of balance if we don't honor and observe them both. Fact and feeling, two parts to the whole. And that is why we have Pussy Church. You know, so we can practice honoring our feelings. So we can practice actually connecting to the source of our feeling. And not only that, so that we can start honoring ourselves in the way that we deserve to be honored. So that we can start trusting like the little whispers inside, you know, when like you meet someone or you feel something inside and you're like, e. You know, I don't know if I should trust that because maybe I'm overreacting. But learning how to not write those feelings off as overreactions and starting to, starting to be with them. Starting to unravel them, getting to know them, to start to understand what they're actually here to show you. His feelings aren't for nothing. They aren't toss aways, right? They aren't what define us, right? It's, it's not our defining qualities, but they are indicators 
to how you are existing in this world, how you're doing in this world. So if you're in an environment and you feel angry, it's showing you that something in your environment is flaring you up. So perhaps there's something that you can change so that you can come back to your natural state, which is peace, you know, which is harmony, which is love. <sighs> and, um, and just noticing this like little like mischievous energy inside of like, you know, I'm really excited about Pussy Church for many reasons, like the reverence part and also like the reclaiming part. Like, I just bet. I just know people have different reactions when they hear Pussy Church. And I've seen them for myself. You know, I've seen it. I've seen people be like, wait, what? Or be like, wait, that's like blasphemy. And to that, all I have to say is, is it wrong to honor ourselves? Hmm. Is it wrong to trust ourselves? Is it wrong to revere our pussies? Is it wrong to pray to our pussies? Is it wrong to connect with our pussies? And to that answer, I wholeheartedly believe no. I think it's actually High time we begin doing these things with our pussies. So with that, I hope you guys join us in devotion. Every Sunday we're going to be experiencing new ways to revere our divine pussies and to connect with our pussies and to unlock, you know, the value that we for so long have not seen within ourselves, you know, erasing that shame and really letting, letting our truth, our sexuality, you know, our feminine essence, our feminine expression, whatever shape it takes, you know, whether it's fierce, whether it's loving, flowing, whether it's silent, whether it's sultry, like really allowing all of those parts to have a home in this world. We don't need to suppress to get by. We don't need to fight to win, you know. And in fact, when we come together, we'll experience a strength that this world has never seen. We'll experience abundance that this world never thought was possible. And I can't wait for that to be here because it's on its way. <sighs> mm. Really grateful for this space of speaking and being in truth with you. And uh, I look forward to being in more spaces like this. whether virtually or physically. And just one more quick check-in for anyone tuning in, you feel free to comment if there's something that you've been experiencing and you wanna share, or if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me in this moment, I'm gonna open and have a few more minutes for you to, I'm gonna leave the container open for a few more minutes. If anyone wants to, Hop in or quickly share. And again, just so everyone knows, we're going to be doing this every week, every week on Tuesday. The space will be here for you to practice being in your truth, for you to practice, for us to practice actually being a community, not just a name, like not just calling us feminine truth sisterhood for the kicks and giggles of it, but like 
actually being in feminine truth and actually being a sisterhood. Um, Cause that's important to me. That's important to me because I want to be real in this world. So I want everything that I do in this world to be real. I want to share real spaces with real women and, uh, you guys are all that because that's why you were also called into the space. I am sure that we all share that desire and wants. And in fact, I saw them when you guys posted why you wanted to be part of this group. So this is why we're here. All right, ladies, I don't see any more questions coming through. So feel free to post them if you're watching the replay. And also, I also want to just quickly say what this week's devotional practice is going to be in Pussy Church. So this week we are learning the embodied goddess with Judea Barboza. She's going to be teaching us how to tap into our creative sexual energy through breath, sound alchemy, dance and laughter. So really, we're gonna be really tapping into ways to move past our depletion. You know, sometimes we can feel depleted by trying to play and be all the roles other than who we really are. So this will be a fun space for us to reignite our creative energy, our play, our essence of love and compassion, the goddess essence that we all carry so that we can start showing up in our relationships, you know, fulfilled, loving, and lit up again, you know, as, as divine goddesses, you know, instead of that sense of feeling drained from upholding some idea of who you should be. So I look forward to being in practice in this Sunday service at 11 a.m. We're going to be gathering online and um, drop in price for this devotional practice is $18. It's going to be $14 for Black, Indigenous, Women of Color. The code for that is receiving all capitals. I'll be putting this in the comments for you guys. And we also have a pleasure pass, which is a unlimited membership with access to all pussy church sessions in the month so that's about four or five sessions depending on how many sundays there are in the month so you're getting over 50 percent off so you're getting all of those classes for 44 a month and you get access to the replays if you're not a morning riser and also you're supporting a collective of women we are coming together we're changing the business model we're an organization an organism with a focus on honoring our feminine essence, our feminine aspects. So we are letting this organically shape and form and cater to our needs and also honoring our divine masculine by holding the container for this. So we are really changing the world in the way that we're doing business and the way that we're coming together as a collective. So by you honoring and supporting yourself, you're honoring and supporting the greater feminine um, presence in this world so um yeah we highly encourage you to sign up for the pleasure pass it's an all around amazing deal and it also it also is a step in changing our experience of being in this world and of being in balance and of honoring all sides of ourselves so I look forward to seeing you guys this Sunday at 11 a.m. EST. And until then, I send you guys with so much love and may you remain committed to your truth. No matter how hard it is, may you feel the strength in your feelings. Much love to you.